Welcome to Commander Tune Ups with the Nitpicking Nerds. This time we're tuning up Todd's Sneaky Rogues deck piloted by Anawan the Ruin Thief. I'm your host, Joe Cherries. I'm your host, BZ, and that makes us the Nitpicking Nerds. We're bringing you daily Commander content, so if you want to support that little mission and our livelihood, you can go to Patreon. Dot com and then support us that way. There's a link in the description for you. Literally the best way to support us. And if you want to support us in other ways by purchasing cards, you might want TCGplayer.com. Link in the description. Click it. Go. Navigate through TCG Player. Buy whatever you want on the site. And guess what? You'll be supporting the nerds. And if you like the best... Sh I almost called them shields again. Ah. If you like the best sleeves ever made, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart, what I believe, then you want Dragon Shields. There's also affiliate links in the description below. Go get their sleeves, their playmats, any one of their cool things. If you use that link, EU, US, guess what? You'll be supporting us. There's no reason to not support us. We have every link you could ever hope for now in the description. So this is a commander tune-up, which means we're taking a patron or Kickstarter backer uh, decks, and then we're going to upgrade them under their restrictions. And the restrictions Todd has for this deck are almost none. He wanted to be a sneaky little rogues deck, which we definitely achieved. We're going to say the word sneaky about 50 more times. And... The budget was none. We could just do whatever we wanted. Yep. So with no budget, we'll add whatever we want to this deck. So first thing we have to do here, we have to read Anawan, Ruin Thief. Two blue, black, legendary creature, vampire, rogue, two, four. Other rogues you control get plus one, plus one. Whenever one or more rogues you control deals combat damage to a player, that player mills a card for each one damage dealt to them. If a player mills at least one creature card this way, you draw a card. I always find these wordings on cards to be a little confusing. So with Anawan, if you hit each opponent and they all mill a creature, you can draw three cards each turn. Yes, he he triggers once per opponent hit by a rogue on the turn, meaning you can draw up to three cards with his ability in a game of commander where you have, well, three opponents. The theme of this deck, it's sneaky rogues. You were sneaking. We're sneaking and we're sneaking. That's sneaking. Yeah, we're going to play some tricky... Free spells, some instants that are going to mess you up, maybe some flash effects that you didn't see coming, and we're just going to sneak around you, and we're going to push through combat damage with tiny sneaky creatures and gain card advantage through sneaky Anawan. So we have combat damage, card advantage, and then we just need one of our big little finishers to pump up our sneaky boys. Yeah, so the first thing that we want to go over uh, is the best cards are already in the deck. So give everyone an idea of what this deck came in with and what it was doing from the start. The very best cards it had. Well... First is the one mana rogues that can't be blocked. There was three of them in the deck. We added more. We'll go over those in a bit. But Changeling Outcast, uh, Merfolk, Wind Robber, and Triton Shorestalker, these all have evasion of some kind at least. And they're rogues, so we can get them through easily, meaning we can curve into Anawan and just have rogues to start hitting with right away. Yeah, we can take advantage of some of the commander, like the commander removal isn't really going after one mana little dummies. They're trying to like, all right, what's the biggest threat at the table? I need to take out this Smothering Tithe. I need to take out this thing that's going to like literally kill me if I don't answer it. All of these guys are coming down one, turn one, turn two, and turn three. So that by the time we have Anawan, we can hit everyone at once, mill creatures, and then draw three cards and just feel super ahead. None of these guys are going to die to removal, and if they do, it's super inefficient. Speaking of not dying to removal, while well, there's Invisible Stalker, it doesn't die to removal. It has hex proof, so now we have a guy that he is he does cost one more mana than our one mana one, so he's a little worse in that sense. But the spot removal is not going to get him, meaning he'll keep sneaking through until he's wiped away with a board wipe. Yeah, and there's also Notorious Throng, so when you hit with all these rogues that do get pumped up by Anawan, well, let's say you hit with four tutus, okay. We're going to trigger that, probably draw two cards, let's say, and then we're going to cast Notorious Throng for its Prawl cost, get eight more tutus, and then take an extra turn. Yeah, the the Prowl cost is extra on this one. Usually they cost less because the idea is like you have to sneak through a rogue that's tough to do, but this one costs more because you get more in the form of an extra turn with this card. This could definitely be one of the ways to, to close out. <laughs> yeah, and then for card draw, I mean, this deck, one and one's already card draw within himself. But we have little tiny dudes sneaking through all the time. So Biden of Thassa, Reconnaissance Mission, and Coastal Piracy, they all essentially have the same text. Whenever a creature you can deal, control deals combat damage, draw a card. Yeah, we're, we're going to have like redundant copies of Anawan so that we're, we're never just, we never just have, because that's a nightmare scenario. We never want just like three 1-1s one that can't be blocked and we get no benefit from them attacking. We, we have to have some things. We, gotta, we put enough in the deck. Well, Todd put enough in the deck that we're going to see one. Then some of the other best characters, the finishers, I'm not going to tell you exactly what they do. They'll be on screen. There's Vorpal Sword, Stink Drinker Imp, and Ink Fathom Witch. All three of these characters are just, well, the finishers for the deck, and they were pretty dang good. They basically just double the power. The last two double the power of our rogues so we can kill faster, and then Vorpal Sword just takes somebody out. If they 
if, late, if they go defenseless and you have a bunch of mana or you have a, to equip this and they don't find an answer or you have a counter spell backup, they lose. Yeah. So next we're going into sneaky. Sneaky. Yeah, we're doing some. This is the sneaky category. So we're going to do what we cut from the sneaks and what we added for the sneaks. Uh, we cut Fairy Vandal. Yeah, it is decently easy to draw a second card sometimes, but this is just not that good. And if we're not drawing the second card, then it's a 1 2 with flying. And there's just a lot of better cards in that we can put in this deck in that spot. This is probably the best card we cut. I don't know. It's so okay. It's a two drop evasive rogue that has some more text on it. That's probably fine, but I think I'm okay also cutting it and making room for some of the, the better cards. This is pretty French vanilla. Yeah, uh, Narset's Sets Reversal was the next card we cut. Uh, we just, this deck had better counter spells in it already. It had Mana, mana, drain. mana drain and Fierce Guardianship. We don't need Narset's Sets Reversal. This is just too far down the line. It's a great card and it is powerful, but it's not as powerful as the kind of counter spells this deck is playing. Yeah, and Surefoot Infiltrator, Surefooted Infiltrator, and Marsh Flutter, they're just way too slow. I don't want to. I mean, they're evasive rogues, but for four mana, I just don't think we need that. We don't want to be paying four mana for our threats. Our threats want to be one, two, three mana, basically at the most, or they better do something special if they're going to cost more than that. And oh boy, did we add to the sneaks. Oh, and the first one, I want to talk about the first one because I love this card. We'll just go back and forth. We have a ton of ways to sneak through little guys. We already went over the ones that were in the deck. We're going to even tell you more right here. But Fallen Shinobi is the best sneaks guy ever. He's a ninja. He's not a rogue. So that is a downside of him. But this is the best ninja to trigger we have out there. When it hits, top two cards of the library, cast them for free. Mm. Ah, chef's kiss to this card. It's only four mana. This card is so nuts. We also have Slitherblade. Let's add to the plethora of one drop evasive rogues. Take take your flyer out of there. I got a one drop that's unblockable. Yeah, uh, Brazen Bower. This is tricky in two ways. You get to you get to both uh, do a bounce that no one's expecting, and you get that three one flyer. Guess what? It's a rogue. It's a rogue. Tetsuko Umazawa. I was surprised this wasn't in there. This is a good a good one. Anything you have that's a rogue that's tiny that can be blocked, now just can't be blocked. Because if it has one power, one toughness, like Brazen Barrow. Yeah, exactly. There's, there's just a bunch of things that can be blocked in the deck because not every single rogue is evasive in the whole format. So there are some in the deck, like Brazen Barrow, that can be blocked. Doesn't matter. Tetsuko's making them unblockable. And Tetsuko's a rogue, and she counts herself. Yeah. Wow. Isn't all that just amazing for the deck? Yeah. Nalex Exploitation. This has Prowl, meaning that we get to cast for less in our deck. So it's going to be four mana. Cast the best instant from target opponent's deck. Okay, well, it's that, our sorcery. That's going to be amazing. Yeah, this card already sees play when it can only cost seven mana. And it's still decent. We're only ever going to pay four mana because this deck will easily be dealing damage with rogues. If you know somebody who, like, always plays Expropriate or something and you just know what's in their deck, oh, oh. this is so... Four mana for Expropriate. Oh. You can cast on, like, turn five. Oh. And it exiles. Now you don't have to worry about it for the rest of the game because you cast their Expropriate. Yeah. Uh, the oh, end, you know they have like a time walk in their deck? And the end clause is exiled on expropriate. So you get rid of it from their deck and you get expropriate. I don't know how you Thanks for it. that. Yeah, that feels amazing every single time. Snuff out. It's a zero mana interaction. They're, you're tapped out. You've Sneaky. got all your creatures tapped. They're like, okay, put all my eggs in one basket. You're like, boom, sneak your face off. Snuffed them out. Yeah. Speaking of sneaky, commandeer, zero mana, take control of their spell. All right. Well, that's pretty sneaky because guess what? You tapped out. They're like, well, I can just do whatever I want. And then they go to slam their Ugin. You're like, that's my Ugin, and it's awesome. Yeah, if you uh, if you have enough evasive little dummies on board, sometimes you can hold them, and that can be the blue spells you pitch to Commandeer. The deck's not mono blue, so Commandeer is not as good as it could possibly be, but it still costs seven and still has the same text. And sometimes Commandeer is worth casting for seven. Oh, yeah. Like, it, it, there are spells worth stealing. Like you said, there's these expropriates, these time stretches, these tooth and nails, these insane cards that you're willing to pay seven to take control of them. Yeah, there's also Soul Shatter. It's a nice, quick three for one. Take out their best thing every time. I think Soul Shatter is like really underrated. It's a really good card. Yep. And because, oh, this one's my favorite to add to this deck. Big sneak. I, big sneak. And this card absolutely 100% belonged in this deck. I think he just, he must have missed it because it is so good. Dowsing Dagger. You have all these little, tiny, unblockable creatures. Throw that Dowsing Dagger on, sneak through, and all of a sudden you have Lotus Field. That is amazing. Yeah, it just it's just a Gilded Lotus land. It's never going to die. It's just going to stay there. And you, you paid four mana and you got three of it back right away. This is like the best deal of the century. Oh no, they get plants with Defender. They can't even block our stuff anyway. And guess what? We put sneaks in the lands. We put sneaks in the lands. You gotta be kidding no. me. Shizo, Death Star Officer. There's not an insane amount of legends, but we can make our commander have fear, baby. Come on, that's so awesome. Sneaky lands? Sneaky lands. Anawan can now get through and 
instead of watching everybody else get in, he can get his hands dirty and get sneaky himself. Yeah. I mean, uh, okay, he, this is another win condition. <laughs> you are like so big on this. So what 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 do we got? Oh, come on. How is this not sneaks? This is It is. Just, this is total it. sneaks. It's Strixhaven Stadium. You get to sneak out somebody losing and I I love it so so much you just if you can get up to 10 counters it is an achievement unlocked for starters and on top of that you just get to make a player lose and your guys are unblockable it's not like if they put up these big wall defenses you can't get through it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if they have 50 blockers we have 50 unblockable guys to get through those 50 blockers and if they want to attack you and try to remove the counters from Strixhaven Stadium well now they have creatures tapped and your guys that can be blocked well they have less blockers in the way so Strixhaven Stadium I think you could definitely steal some victories or more realistically kick somebody out of the game uh, early on unexpectedly i mean if you if uh there's some cards like uh like we mentioned that the extra turn card that makes rogues if you can do that and then follow Ooh. up with a strixhaven stadium you're gonna eliminate a player 100 percent. there's no way you're not yeah it doesn't even have to be in play you can go act, untap on my extra turn then play stadium go uh oh look out yeah absolutely insane next category we got here uh it's ramp we cut nothing, nothing. this deck was ramping, or not ramping, was lacking extremely hard in the ramp category, sadly. It, it just, it only had, I think, two, maybe three ramp spells, and that's just, just three, yeah. That's just not enough for Commander. Yeah, the curve was low on the stack. We're playing a lot of one, two drops, but we still do need the ramp at some points in the game, so we added Talisman of Dominance, Arcane Signet, uh, Wafer's Bobble and Thought Vessel for the normal artifact ramp. It's like your standard package. Just a standard package. And then, what else do we have? Oh, Tell we, them about we this found there, Sneaky Ramp. Grim sneaky Hireling. Ramp. Grim Hireling says whenever a creature hits an opponent, you get two treasures, but that works for each opponent. So you can potentially, potentially get six treasures when you hit one opponent each time. And one might say draw three cards off of that exchange. So now, you just basically, that's really close. If I'm drawing three cards and, and making six mana, that's pretty close to just an extra turn. You've got to, after I hit everybody. You've got to be kidding me. That Grim Hireling and Dowsing Dagger are sneaky ramp and strict saving stadium. This is unbelievable. This deck is unbelievable. It's, it's too sneaky. It's too sneaky. It's too sneaky. You can't even deal with this. Okay, now we got to move to card draw. We already mentioned a fair bit of it. This deck had so much card draw, and you got to factor in Anawan is drawing you a million cards every time he doesn't die. But we cut chart of course. It's more of a cantrip. It's not even that bad of a card, but you got to make room when your deck gets stronger. Distant Melody. I don't even really like this card. Especially, we don't have Pact of the Serpent in here, and that card's better than Distant Melody. So just not going to make it in this deck specifically, maybe some other deck. Military Intelligence, don't need it. Drown in Dreams, don't need it, even though it is a good card. It, we want to be able to mill ourselves. You can't kill your opponents with mill, not in this deck anyway. And so that means we have to mill ourselves, but we don't have anything value-wise to mill. We're not going to get any extra spells in our hand uh, that have flashback or anything. So what, we just don't need it. Yeah, and uh, Vanquisher Manor was the last one we cut. Just not good enough. Um, Anawan is already drawing the command zone, so we don't need as much draw as we would normally need in a, an EDH deck, so we can cut some of it. Um, and on top of that, the cards that do draw, uh, the, the three that were listed before, the, what is it, Coastal Piracy, Reconnaissance Mission, and Biden of Thassa, those cards are so good that we don't need to be overloaded, absolutely, because if we draw one of those, it's going to draw enough for the rest of the game. And also, this card will draw enough for the rest of the game as well. Kindred Discovery. I mean, naming Rogue, this card is bonkers. I can't. We Kindred can't, Discovery is the best tribal payoff that exists. I, I think that's true. I, I do believe that's honestly true. There is not a better tribal payoff than Kindred Discovery. We can't ever shout this card out enough. It is so silly. If you have attack triggers that make tokens, if you have creatures in play, this effect has haste. You don't need to play anything after. If you just go Kindred Discovery on turn five, attack with four rogues. You just draw four cards, and yeah. the spell's still in play. Yeah, exactly. It's basically the exact same as those other three cards I listed, but also it's when you cast. Okay, well, that's completely bonkers, and it's on attacks. So if by some means, like, uh, Brazen Bar can't sneak by because they have a flying blocker, doesn't matter. You still get the draw, and then you trade off in the air. Right. It's like, I don't care. I suicided it, but it, I get a card off of it before that even happens. And maybe you draw... Something crazy, maybe you draw like a Fallen Shinobi, like, uh oh, it's about to get real sneaky up in here. And then this card, this next card, is sneaky good. Because uh, it doesn't look that good, it's more of an opportunist. Once per turn, whenever a creature dies, you can draw a card. Creatures just die incidentally all the time. You're going to be drawn all day, baby. Here's the thing this card is not good in certain decks, but then there's decks that it actually goes in, which is kind of surprising. Um, so, like, for example, a random Aristocrats deck or a Graveyard deck, this card does not go in those. You have Better options that are like ten times better. You have Midnight mm -hmm. Reaper uh, and Grim Horror Specs and stuff like that, and Liliana General General, where you can. There's no cap, so why would you cap yourself with this card? You don't need that many cards. Yeah, no cap. And you don't need. Yeah, you literally no cap. <laughs> so 
But it, it, fa- it fits into these more weird niche decks, like there was a Zagras Pinger deck this goes in, and this Rogue's Tribal kind of damage deck, when your guys end up dying or some of them sacrifice for value, it actually does work. We don't ki- I, I think the where this goes in is decks that aren't going to be sacrificing their creatures. Basically, if this can draw you more cards than Midnight Reaper, it probably goes in your deck. Yeah, exactly. This deck does not want its creatures to die specifically. Mm-hmm. But it it has a nice it has a nice spot of removal and there is going to be creatures dying instantly. This is just how magic works. And because of that, having this is fine. And also, it's a rogue. It's, it's a, a rogue. Come on. It's a rogue. All right. This is a category of cuts. I didn't really know what to call it, so I just named it uh? So it's the Meat Hook Massacre is the first cut. I think this was a miss in the deck. The Meat Hook Massacre is like this scalable board wipe kind of with an asterisk and then it has this aristocrats effect that's stapled on. Now we don't really care about that because we have no way to force our creatures to die. We have no way to force our opponent's creatures to die other than like spot removal. And with a scalable Black Sun Zenith wipe, our creatures are going to be the first one to die every time. So we would want something that's like, if we wanted a board wipe in the slot, we need something expensive that takes out everything else like Kindred Dominance, which we didn't put in. But that's what you need if you want to wipe the board, not minus three, minus three for five mana. That just kills our creatures and doesn't kill anything else. Yeah, and then the uh, next cut was Graft Digger's Cage. Um, it, maybe he has a, a large meta of graveyard decks, but there was no ways to tutor this out, no ways to continually get it. And being a one-off graveyard hate piece like this, instead of playing Graft Digger's Cage, try playing something. If you want to, if you want graveyard hate, try replacing it with like Soul Guide Lantern, a card that if you don't need graveyard hate can cycle itself. Yeah. Uh, Mind Crank we cut. this. I know this is kind of like a pseudo combo with Sir Conrad, which is also in the deck. How they, you know, every time someone knows a creature, uh, they take they all take one, and then it's three more mills, and anyone knows a creature, they all take one, and it's three more mills. So it could get some work done there. There's also Dusk Mantle Guild Mage not in the deck that it could potentially go for. I think we just kind of backed away from that combo and went more for the sneaky combat damage, like what the soul of the deck that we got. You could easily include some Mind Crank combos. We just don't have them. Terrible by itself. Terrible. Yeah, yeah absolutely. If you don't have Sir Conrad, it's it's crappy. It's not a card you want to be playing. Swift for Pooch, we cut. We left Lightning Greaves in. I think the equip one difference. We don't need a redundant version of this effects. It's not super important to record to the deck and what it's doing, but it can be helpful. So I think leaving in Lightning Greaves, cutting Swift for Pooch was right in this situation. Yeah, we got so many small, tiny creatures. I think the one to zero equip cost definitely a huge. Sakashima, a thousand faces. Our creatures are pretty bad, uh, at least for four mana. So I don't really want to clone any of them. So unless you're cloning like Sir Conrad or, or Anawan, I just don't think you need this. Yeah, it's not that important. Exactly. The only thing worth copying, is, I think, is really Anawan overall, mostly. So like you said, just not worth it. And uh, we cut Varagoth, uh, Blood Sky Sire. I just don't think the rate's here. I, I think, don't like this card. Um, I don't think the rate is there for this card. So I just you just need to look at what's happening. You pay you pay a premium, uh, three mana, two, three death touches. Those are okay stats. I mean, I'm not looking for that in Commander. I never play something with those stats. So that's that's something really good. And as an attack trigger, that when it attacks, you can once per turn Vamp Tutor. That's not good enough. Um, and that's just too much of a premium. If you can get two, three attacks of the sure, then you're guaranteeing your best draws. But this isn't card advantage, and this isn't really where I, I think you want to be in Commander. Yeah, it's a sorcery speed set up thing where you can't wait to see what happens if something changes and the board state changes you now have a crappy card on top of your deck even if it did work Mm -hmm. and it's play it wait a turn attack on top wait a turn then you get the card I just don't think I need this at all despite the fact that it's a rogue not sneaky I have seen that I have have actually seen someone tutor something at the top then the board gets like oops well it's stuck on top now brick brick Uh, in Black Boy Reforged we just don't have a lot of legends, and I understand the thought process. You put this on one of your one one rogues, okay? They they're always going to sneak through. They are unblockable. They can't do anything about it. Their equip cost is too high for that, and because of that, I'm just completely off this card. For that reason, I'm, I'm out. out. We we could definitely do a Shark Tank spinoff lands. Last thing, you always got to touch up the lands in every deck. Detection Tower, hate that card. Black Bloom Rogue, yes for a budget deck, no for a deck that has Mana Drain in it and is higher power. We can get more consistent, reliable stuff. Not that MDFCs are bad. This one just doesn't make it in higher power mm-hmm. decks. Yep, and we cut uh, Vesuva. Vesuva just is a card you need to have land you want to copy. Or maybe even just one land you want to copy. This deck doesn't even have that one land that we oh, want to copy. Not really. And we cut four islands and three swamps. Yep. How about the ads? For ads, we added Agadim's Awakening. We're in a two-color deck. We've literally mentioned this a million times. We're in a two-color <laughs> deck. We're going to play the Mythic MDFCs of both colors. No doubt. Cavern of Souls. There's no budget here. Cavern of Souls is just going to let us resolve more uh, rogues than we would before. Oh, yeah. Tainted Isle. Just a nice dual land. Fetid Pools. Nice dual land. Drown Catacomb. Underground River. River of Tears. Just three more dual lands. Make the deck 
spot on. You're never going to, I think, with all these dual lands and stuff, you're just going to have double of both colors on turn two. It's going to feel great. Also, there's Myriad Landscape. Just shore up that ramp a little bit. And just a quick note on, you said Agony's Awakening we added. Seagate Restoration was already in there. So. Yeah, it was already in the deck. Uh, so, budget. Uh, there was not any for this deck. Uh, sneaky theme was the only restriction. We spent $258.25. Damn, we're good. And also, besides being good, we spent like $70 on that Cavern of Souls. It's $84. <laughs> it's so much <laughs> so it's like money. a third of it. Uh, the average TMC was 2.75. Now, we, you won't believe how good we are. We lowered it to a measly, a measly 2.74. Basically playing CDH now. Yeah, we basically took it. And the total number of changes, 26. This deck was very focused, and it was strong and knew what it wanted to do. It just had a f couple of cards where we were like, eh, not sure we want to be doing that plan, and we shared it up to be a little bit tighter on the game plan. Todd, you will notice a 25% increase in sneakiness every game on average. Did you, and what? Did you see how excited I was, Todd, about the sneakiness? It's so sneaky. I mean, you, I could not contain my happiness at how, cool deck. at how sneaky we made this deck. It's on theme. I would almost want to take this sneakiness, maybe for like a, a shuffle scuffle gameplay deck, and just go every little every single card in the deck is a stupid sneaky trick. Uh, so so let's just say, one, b before we end this video, the one card I wanted to cut was Rogue's Class. I don't think the card's very good. I think it's too slow. It's too sneaky. I understand it's, it's on theme. The menace isn't relevant enough for our creatures. And it is nine mana to get that engine going. And then you have to start spending mana cards. I don't like that card in Commander, personally. And I would never play it. But I understand it's on theme. Because what would you want to cut? Well, you know what? You can switch the Rogues class for the Mind Crank if, you were, if you're not sure and yeah. you want the Mind Crank in there. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll BZ would have cut one card that I wouldn't have cut. Uh, what card was that? It was Ganti. You oh, said yeah. You, Ganti, too slow. Not sneaky enough. It is sneaky. You are <laughs> you literally put one of their cards face down. They don't know what it is. That's, That's a weird cantrip. And then, and then they cast Demonic Tutor and they look for a card and it's not there because you snuck it out of their deck. You snuck it out of their deck. <laughs> That is the video. Special <laughs> shout out. I'm doing this for some reason. Go to ahead. all of our patrons. We love you as much as we can without making you feel uncomfortable because why do we do that? Only the bad channels are making you feel uncomfortable with how much they love you. We're right in the sweet spot. You can go to patreon.com to join the ranks of all these people scrolling on this generous patrons card, which has been recently revamped by yours truly. How else can they support the channel? I will never understand how we have been doing that shout out for two years now, right? Uh -huh. And you still don't say it correctly. I said it wrong? It's... We love you all. I said that. As much as we can yep. without making you uncomfortable. I said that. No, you what, did not what did say, I say You leave a word out. I, I think it was all. We love oh, you as much as we can. You do. Sorry, I'm but not it's a like, robot, but it's like, dude. Oh, well, if we have a saying and we say it, I say, I say it 99% of the videos and I say it the same every single time. I always mix up my shout outs. They, you couldn't find two BZ shout outs to anything that are the same. I have, I have catchphrases. I have catchphrases. I think Howdy Doody's one of them, right? <laughs> what? <laughs> I've been saying that. I've been saying that for years. Where's that coming from? <laughs> <laughs> howdy doody. Tell them about the links. Yeah, so if you want a howdy doody on down <laughs> to, to, to the description, down there you'll find a link to tcgplayer.com. That link will take you to the website, and you can use it to buy magic cards or whatever other things they might have on the website. And if you use, start with that link, then guess what? You're supporting and they're picking their... <laughs> <laughs> what? That's so stupid. You can also uh, zip any doodah right on down to the EU or US Dragon Shield links by the best sleeves in the entire known local presentation of the universe. And once you do that, how are you ever going to lose a commander game again? Never. You, how? You can't because... How? Knowing you're... you supported the nerds and yourself? Yeah. I mean, that's just insanity. <laughs> Howdy doody is my new catchphrase. Yes. I'm going with that forever. Uh, I do think... Like, honestly, I'm not like... like That wasn't like, a, like me calling you out. It's just... It's funny that... I say the same thing every single video. Yeah, everyone hates it. And I've been saying, uh, oh, yeah. If I had, I'm going to go make a poll. What's your least favorite part about the channel? It's going to be <laughs> either uh, the fact that Joe hasn't said Howdy Doody yet or the fact <laughs> I've that been saying shots are all the same. I've been saying Howdy Doody for years. I don't know what you guys are talking about. As, as my quick tidbit, when <laughs> you... you when, so this quote from SpongeBob is just in my head. And whenever anyone says, says uh, not good enough, in my head, I just think, not good enough, Gary. Not good enough. And it just makes me laugh every single time. I don't know why. All right. No, when he's got the mustache and the, the, the whistle. Yeah. Not he's good screaming. enough. That, that that quote was you trying to do my shout out. That was your response. <laughs> All right. Well, we're out. Peace out, Trap Scout.